and that's why it's confusing because we most of us who call ourselves Moors don't even know the word means black and, if that, and that's all the word means. The only other thing that's connected is that those were the brothers and sisters who converted to Islam in North Africa and then later converted to the Arab culture. But most of the people who were historically called Moors by the, the Italians, I mean the Romans, those people now live in Senegal, Mali, Niger, Nigeria. They're the people we call in Hausa. So they had to flee the Arab Muslim because the white Muslim declared war on the black Muslim. That's how we lost Africa. We didn't lose Africa to some other people. The white Muslims declared war on the black Muslims. And the ironic thing, the black people of North Africa were Muslims before the Arabs or the Turks were Muslims. So you have the black Muslims who started Islam gets attacked by the white and the half-breed Muslims who have destroyed Islam. So that's the reality we got to deal with, and a lot of brothers don't. So where did the Hebrew come from? When did that come into our history? Yeah, yeah the, the Hebrew thing is a shell. In, in 1700 BC, what we call Kemet, or Egypt today, was invaded by a mixed group of blacks called the Hyksos. They weren't really whites, they were really black folks who was kind of mixed. And they conquered northern Egypt. Those black folks who was oppressed under their foot, who escaped, after 400 years of being under their foot and accepted their cultural views, escaped and went and attacked another black people, the people of Canaanite. They were black as ace of spade. Most of the people we call Canaanite live in Ghana today. They call themselves the God Dang Bay people. Okay? So these other black folks who have become a mixed breed black folks, who we call the Hebrews, go and attack another black folks and take their land. Look in the book. It says, kill the women that have been with men. Kill, kill, kill all the men. And the girls and women who have not known men marry them as wives. This is their Bible. Committing genocide and talking about their genocide, killing black people. Then they tell you that circumcision is something the Hebrew brought. But they don't tell you that it was the Canaanite king that told Abraham, you're unclean, and taught him circumcision. And if you look up the Canaanite kings, what you're going to see, they all wore Egyptian crowns. They were nothing more than a province of Egypt. Okay? And Egypt is the black Ethiopia of the early days. The Hebrews are coming out saying that Imhotep was a Hebrew Israelite. They're confused. They need to go and study history. There was no such thing as the Hebrew Israelite at, at that time. That, that's an invention mostly of white people, actually, because the people didn't call themselves Hebrew Israelites. Matter of fact, if you go to Ethiopia, where the white mixed breed Roman and Greeks who converted to that tradition drove the blacks out and the blacks went into Yemen and went into to Ethiopia and they called themselves Bene Israel. This will be the house of Israel. That's all that, and, and the house of Israel meant that we, are, we, are, we belong to this group of people and house simply means family. Like the same word we use for family today, that's what house meant in those days. So they called themselves Bene Israel. And so Bene Israel meaning that we are the people of, of Israel who've been driven out of our land by the mixed breeds, half breed Roman and Greeks, and those who were loyal to them. And those are the same people fighting there now with the Eastern European Khazars who converted to Islam, to, to Judaism. And Judaism is not what was being practiced then. If, if, if you really study their book, which is the call, and, and that's not even their book, because much of what is called the Torah, if you really get down in it deep, it, 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 it ain't talking about no one God. You really got to get and read the damn thing for yourself. They're not talking about one God. They're talking about multiple gods. And they call them, that's in the Torah, and they call them by names. They're talking about multiple gods, but read it for yourself. Or if you just go to a book like much as people beat up on the Pharaoh, go look in Isaiah, when Taharka is living, when Taharka saves Israel. He tells the Israel soldiers, don't attack the army of Taharka. He said he was king of Egypt and all the world. And he had come to save the Israelites from the Assyrians. The Assyrians are the first white invasion into Africa. The Hyksos is a colored invasion. The Hittites is a colored invasion. The Persians is a colored black invasion. It isn't until you get the Assyrian that you get a white invasion, and then you get the Greek, a white invasion, and then you get the Roman, a white invasion. And those are the people that formulate what we now call an Hebrew Israelite. If you go back to the early days of the Hebrew Israelite movement in this country, and, and Rabbi, oh, I forgot my brother's name, who had his place on, Rabbi Matthews, you've been around, brother, that's a good thing. He, he, didn't, he didn't get, no need to finish this. 
Rabbi Matthews and his elders did not get caught up with those who end up selling out to the Jews downtown, going to Germany and studying under those cracker Jews and coming back here calling themselves rabbis. And they're the ones that dominated the teaching today. We need to go back and ask and talk about the history that Rabbi Matthews and them was trying to tie together to show who the people was that escaped from under the Hyksos and what happened to those people who came, they not only came back uh, into uh, Ethiopia and into, but remember, we're not talking about a large population. There's millions upon millions and millions of people in Africa. You're talking about a little spot on the map this big. And we're going to take a little spot on the map this big and make it important because the white man made it important. Had not the white man become a Jew and had not the white man become a Christian, we wouldn't even be mentioning that shit. Okay? That's the only reason we're dealing with it because they did that. Because our tradition. If you understand voodoo is the mother of Judaism, voodoo is the mother of Christianity, voodoo is the mother of Islam. And ain't none of their leadership got the testicles to attest to it. And they all know it to be so if they're learned enough. No, okay. And let me just say, I'm using voodoo to mean traditional African spiritual system. Um, will you be here this week or next week? When are you out of town, brother? Hope you're brother, I, I'm heading in Haiti on Monday. Oh. Okay, I'm going to celebrate. Oh, okay. <laughs> class this Tuesday. Uh, next Tuesday, I'll be. I'm only going to be there in yes. and we're going to celebrate his victories over the crackers, yes. and we're going to enjoy ourselves. The first day we're on the ground, we're going to a voodoo ceremony. The second day, we're going to meet the voodoo poet Max Beauvoir, and after I'm meeting with Max to discuss certain things and how we do some stuff back over here. Then we're going to go on the very trail that Dessaline followed as he was slaughtering crackers. He said, Kupatet Buleka, cut off the head and burn the damn houses. We need to go back to that thinking. So no, freedom or death. We can lock them in. Freedom or death. For the, for the following Tuesday. Lock them in for the following Tuesday. So you, you got it. I'm, I'm locked in. But you, got, you just got to call me. Call, call, call me and remind me. Because I'll be rolling, you know. But I always remember, Kupatet Buleka take their heads and, 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 and burn their houses. Come on now. Because we're the only one that loves people who commit genocide against us. We embrace them and say, God told us so. Yes, sir. The question of Akhenaten. Who was he? He was a pharaoh of Egypt. Some people want to say that he might have been Moses. And, and so people said he was the first one to bring monotheism, but that's not true either. He reinstituted it. You remember, Agnaton family comes in in the 18th, well, it's the 18th, 18th dynasty. And it is his grandparents who drives the Hyksos out. And during that period that the Hyksos was there, they dispersed our institutions. So what happens under the 18th dynasty is a reestablishment of the institutions. But then they would become a coup. You remember, Agnaton is the father of King Tut. But King Tut got an older brother called Simkara, who takes over after the father dies. Simkara takes over, then he's killed early. Then the young boy take over, and his name is not um, uh, um, Tut um, Amun at first. His name is Tut on Aton. Okay? The, it's, it's the priest and the generals who was mixed with the family of the Hyksos invaders who would take over. So you get a, a priest named Haram Heb, uh, or a general named Haram Heb, and I forgot what the priest's name, but out of that would, would rise the Ramesses as a dynasty. And then you will see a different kind of take on the spiritual development. The spiritual development then retreat more into what is now Sudan. But Agnaton was an extraordinary intellectual, um, an extraordinary leader, if you read some of his letters, most of his letters you can find in most museums or in books today, he set up peace treaties with everybody around him. You know? Matter of fact, his wife, Nefertiti, was a marriage of convenience to put the kingdom of Mitanni, which is northern Syria, southern Turkey, at peace with Egypt. That was all black then. There were no white Turks, with no white Syrians. All of that was black. And Nefertiti, that one white statue of Nefertiti you see, which is in the museum in Germany, that's the only white statue of the hundreds and hundreds of statues. She's as black as they suspect with lips and nose like all the rest of us. And the, the German guy who took that statue to Germany, when the king wanted to see the prizes he brought back from Egypt, he was ashamed to take this black woman's statue, so he messed with it, called her down and painted it. It was an unfinished statue and took that to the king. 
Then he wrote and apologized in the 1800s, and it wasn't until 10 years ago that they had published the Crackers Apology that he fraudulently presented that Nefertiti thing that they show in all the books today. Before you go you know? On, you, so, you have one of your students that been... Ah, students. Since